we now have a list of unsatisfied notes uh, which we uh, computed in the previous video and uh, we have to now choose one node out of that list and we have to make it satisfied how do we do that we have to uh, uh, move that node to uh, an empty cell uh, which also we will be randomly choosing so let's create this function um, okay let's create this function here i will write this okay so in case the list is empty we'll add just one condition here if length of unsatisfied notes list is not equal to zero then we, uh, we will do all this and what is that we basically have to choose one node randomly out of this list we'll make use of the uh, function uh, random dot choice so let's let's write it node to shift the one we which we will be shifting in this particular iteration so in one iteration we will be shifting one node so we'll choose the node randomly random dot choice unsatisfied nodes list now where do we shift this node again we have to choose one empty location randomly uh, so maybe we can write new position is equal to random dot choice from empty cells okay now we got the node and we have to move it what kind of changes will happen when a node is shifted so basically the so here uh, we have so on the left hand side assume we have a node which is to be shifted on the right hand side we have another node which is empty so the type of the empty node is right now zero so the type of this empty node will change to the type of the node which is now coming into the cell that is one thing uh, also when uh, uh, when you look at the left hand side when this node is shifted uh, this location will become empty so the type of this node will, will become zero so uh, this this changing of type will happen uh, as the first thing second thing that has to happen is the changing of the labels so the label of the node on the left hand side and the node on the right hand side will be exchanged will be uh, exchanged yeah basically so uh, i hope you are able to uh, imagine how i am going to uh, explain you um, so let's first change the type so i'm going to change the type of the empty cell to the type of the node which is going to be shifted so i'll write g dot uh, node new position uh, is basically the location of the news of the empty cell type okay type is going to be equal to the type of the node which is node to shift okay so now we have changed the type of the empty cell to the type of the node which is going to be coming into this cell and the node which got shifted will now be zero uh, as type so i'll write g dot node node to shift its type will now be zero done second thing that has to be done is to exchange the labels so in python exchanging uh, is very straightforward one one simple command you can just do now where are we storing the labels if you remember initially we created this um, dictionary that is labels right so this dictionary is having all the labels uh, where this is where we have to make changes so in this dictionary labels there will be a label for node to shift there will be and in this dictionary labels there will be a label for uh, the node new position already we have to exchange them so uh, 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 let me i'm sorry how do we do it x comma y is equal to y comma x as simple as that this is how you exchange uh, contents of two variables there's no need for any temporary variable so uh, that's uh, that's how i'll do as well 
labels node to shift comma labels no, uh, new position is equal to labels new position comma labels node to shift okay i think we are done with the function okay let me write the the else part of this if so in case the there's nothing in the unsatisfied nodes list uh, basically all the nodes are satisfied we are not going to do anything so this will write uh, pass nothing to be done okay so uh, we are done with this function which is make a node satisfied now let's get back here uh, here we call this function make a node uh, satisfied after which the the list of type 1 nodes and the list of type 2 nodes and the list of empty cells will change uh, and we will need uh, those lists again so we need to update them so what we're going to write is type 1 uh, I think we did that we'll just copy paste let me yeah so this is where we computed these li three lists type 1 node list type 2 node list empty cells now after a node is shifted to another location uh, these lists are going to uh, undergo changes as well so we need to recompute them so I'm just copying pasting here over here okay now how many times do we do do we have to do it uh, as you see, uh, make a node satisfied only makes one node satisfied. So we have to keep doing this for all the nodes which are unsatisfied. So uh, maybe we can start a loop here. Uh, so I'll write for i in range. Uh, you can change it accordingly. Or you can keep a number over here which is dependent on the total number of nodes in the uh, grid. I'm for, for now, I'm keeping it just 100. So basically, we have to repeat all these steps uh, until uh, all the nodes get satisfied. So this all will go under this loop. Once this is done, uh, we are going to display the graph again. So we'll call this function display graph g. Okay. Now before I execute, let me remove this these commands. Comment these commands uh, which were displaying the graph in the very first form okay so let me uh, let me print the uh, let me display the initial graph as well display graph okay so we are going to we are just displaying the initial version of the graph and after that we uh, we have this loop in which all the shifting will happen and in the end uh, this is how the graph uh, this is the command that will display the final graph so this should be displaying the initial graph. This should be displaying the final graph. And uh, in in the middle, there are these 100 iterations. Uh, let me increase the number of iterations uh, here. So uh, what should uh, basically happen? The nodes should move towards uh, nodes of their own type. So that is what is expected. Let's see how it uh, works. Let's uh, execute it and see how it works. Okay, so this is the initial graph. Uh, as you can see, the the nodes of different colors are scattered. I'm closing it and now, okay. So this is the final graph. As you can see, there are, uh, all the green nodes are on the one side, all the uh, red nodes are on the, the other side. And there are a few other nodes as well, which seem unsatisfied as well. Maybe we can increase the, the counter there. So that counter will basically depend on many things. Uh, it could depend on the size of the network that we have taken. Secondly, uh, we have uh, assigned the nodes randomly. So for different random settings, you might require different number of iterations. You can also keep a track of the number of iterations that, that were required to convert this graph uh, into a graph where the people are uh, same type are together. Uh, 10,000 seems uh, too much, maybe 5,000, 5,000. Let's try for these many iterations. Okay, so um, so it's 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 going it's going good. Uh, still, there are a few unsatisfied nodes, but uh, in in uh, more iterations, they they will converge. They will converge basically. Uh, it so happens that all the nodes become satisfied. Another thing to note here is that you can also change the value of t. Um, so here we have taken t is equal to three. Uh, so even uh, for an internal node, since it has eight neighbors, even out of eight neighbors 
only three are of its own type the the node will not move to any other place so so you can change t to four five or any other value and you can see the number of iterations that were required to uh, get to the convergence so you can uh, i think you have gotten enough tools now you can play around with uh, all these values you can keep changing and you can observe and if needed you can plot things as well as in the number of iterations required for converging the these many number of nodes you can change the value of capital n which we initially took uh, capital n was 10 which means there were 100 cells okay so that was about the scaling model uh, i would suggest you you code yourself and uh, you know watch the video only when it is needed um, see uh, in the initial video i think i gave the structure as to what has to be done so if if for every video you do that in the sense you just listen to the structure and the aim that has to be implemented and then uh, code is code it yourself without just following the video that will be actual learning for you uh, so i would suggest you to code yourself and check the video whenever needed only thank you